Hello again, this is World Pastor Tony Alamo. This is program number 759. If you'd like to have a copy of it, Sharon will tell you how at the end of the program. Just let us know whether you want a CD or an audio tape. They're free, including the postage and handling. Today I'm going to continue on in the book of Revelation. I've got songs. But right now let's pray. Father, continue anointing me. Open up the scriptures as never before in the whole world. Lord, let us be receivers of the truth. Let us watch and pray. Watch and pray. Watch and meditate in your word. Praying and meditating that we be worthy to walk in the paradise of God in white raiment. Not one stain, not one blemish. Lord, you've told us to rebuke Satan and to resist him. This means it's a part of the work of the Lord to resist the devil, resist resist Satan, to give no place to him. If we feel ourselves being tempted, we're to turn around, do an about face, and flee from the very appearance of evil, and to reject Satan, to refuse anything that he has, and to give no place to him. In Jesus' name, Lord, we pray that you'll rebuke Satan. And I rebuke you, Satan, in the blood of Jesus. Build a wall of fire around and about his father, that the word may flow from me, your word. Your words will flow through me to the world, that you will dispense your word into the hearts and the minds and the souls of people in the world and in the church, that they may be saved and strengthened in Jesus' name. I pray and everyone says amen. Amen. All right, here's another song that I've recorded recently. It's written by Andre Crouch, and it's called My Tribute, but most people know it by To God Be the Glory. The Prague Symphony Orchestra, conducted by H.B. Barnum, the arrangements by H.B., and also his life choir, and myself singing the lead. Okay, My Tribute, To God Be the Glory. Father God, Praise your holy name, Father God. I thank and praise your holy name. I never knew that you'd choose me in the last days to be the head of a worldwide work of God, preaching the gospel to hundreds of millions of people so that they could be led to glory and they would all give glory to you, Father God. None of the glory goes to me, Father. I give all my love and my praise to you, Father God, be the glory. And I thank you, Father God. How can I say thanks for all the things you have done for me? Things so undeserved yet you give to prove your love for me the voices of a million angels could not express my gratitude all that I am forever hope to be Just let 
me live my life for you, Lord. Let it be pleasing, Lord, to do. And should I gain any praise, let it go to hell. Amen to God be the glory for all the things that he has done. Look at his accomplishments, how anybody could be an atheist and look at the heavens and see how the actual mechanism of God in everything, how he has created everything, all the stars, the sun, the moon, the galaxies, and then little flowers and all the different many colors there are and the bees and the way that the fruit trees won't even operate correctly unless there's bees that all of nature is put together it's an entire subject of its own the nature that god has created well anyway we're back in the third chapter of revelation and we're at verse four now he's rebuking the churches and he's saying thou hast a few names even in Sardis. Some of these people are already dead. They've died along the way. They've backslidden. Their names now are blotted out of the Lamb's Book of Life. And then there's some of them that he says, repent. There's still a chance for you if you'll get right with the Lord. Per adventure, the Lord will definitely, uh, he stated, he promised that he will give you an opportunity if you repent and start doing the first works. Then he goes on to say, Thou hast a few names, even in Sardis, which if not defiled, they are garments. In other words, they're perfect. If they have not defiled their garments. God knows what's up your sleeve. Jesus knows everything that's in your mind, in your heart, the things that you're planning to do. Every day we make little plans. Oh boy, we get to go somewhere and maybe we'll be able to find some new romance. We're getting a little bit over the hill. Maybe we need to know that we're still attractive to the opposite sex. And so we dress up and, uh, you know, the women, ladies put on lots of perfume, put a flower in their hair and dress up real nice. And then their eyes, they start playing eyes with different people. And then when they see them respond, because it's very flattering to see somebody of the opposite sex smiling at them, and they're leading them on, is what it is, and therefore their garments are defiled. In other words, they are making it to where they themselves are setting their own selves up to not be able to inherit the kingdom of God. 
And there's so many other things that they do. They plan to cheat people out of their monies. Like all these different banks today, they have given people loans that they knew they wouldn't be able to pay. And therefore, they haven't paid them, and the economy has gone down the tubes. And there are runs on different banks now, and banks are starting to close up. And different other agencies are moving in now to try to stop a run on all the banks to where there's going to be a depression, like in the 33, 34, somewhere in there. I'm not keeping up with those things. However, I remember the times of the depression, and it's turning that way now. And it's a setup. This is all being controlled by the Vatican. Well, you say, come on, everything couldn't be of the Vatican, even though the Lord says so, that she's the cause the mother of every abominable thing that's going on earth. I mean, people are being run by the government, the satanic government, and the way everything is set up is for them to take over the world, this dictatorship, which they call democracy. And every one of them are liars, and they're just smiling and laughing at the people, the general public of the world, the United States and the world. Thou has a few names, even in Sardis, which, knowing all these things, have not defiled their garments. They didn't get a machine gun and go out after these people and start killing them, but they just said, Lord, you know all the things that are going on in the world, and you never went and attacked anybody. You didn't come against Pilate or Caesar or any of those folks. You just kept doing what the Lord had sent you to do, and the Lord God Almighty took care of you, the Son of Man, when you were here in this world in the flesh. So there's a few names, even in Sardis, which have not defiled their garments. So that means they're perfect. And I say this to Charles Stanley and all the false preachers today that say, oh, no one is perfect. Well, if you're not, you're not going to heaven. Because the Lord requires that people that enter heaven, it's an elite group of us people that have to be perfect to get in. And I don't want any imperfect person in heaven. Does that mean I'm bad? No, I just don't like the imperfection of the world government. I don't like the imperfection of people. And they do have an opportunity to be saved. They have an opportunity to receive the power of God within them, but they don't want to. They deliberately don't want to be perfect. And so if God doesn't have any mercy on them, he sends his people out to witness and testify to them. And they just want to kill us and throw us in prison and persecute us, take us to court on false charges. So I have no sympathy for them. If God wants to burn them, I believe that he's a righteous judge and that that's what it's supposed to be. But they haven't defiled their garments, a few of these people, and that means they're going to heaven. And they shall walk with me, Jesus said, in white. Why not black, like the Catholics? No, they walk with me in white because I say, God, I'm the dictator, say they're going to walk in white, not black or purple or pink or navy blue or any other color. White. Because white is pure and clean and spotless. For they are worthy to walk in white. Verse 5. He that overcometh. Well, I'm saying that anyone can overcome if they do what I tell them. And if they do, he that overcometh, the same shall be clothed in, again, white raiment, so that anyone could see that there's no spot on it. If it was black, you know, black covers up the spots and all this kind of stuff. But you're going to be clothed in white. Why, it's a sin today to say that white is perfect and so on. No, we're not talking about white people. The only white person I've ever seen in my life is Michael Jackson. And the Joker in Batman, I've seen his face before. Actually, I did the Batman jacket for Warner Brothers when I was making clothes in his face. The Joker's face had to be white. So he and Michael Jackson. So we have to be clothed in white clothing, though. And I will not blot out his name out of the book of life. Well, if you're perfect, the Lord says, I will not. This is Jesus talking. He says, if you're perfect, you'll be clothed in white, and I will not blot out your name out of the book of life. Now, there's some people whose names will be blotted out of the book of life because the book of life is people that are saved. 
In other words, the Lord's saying, once saved, not always saved. If he blots your name out of the Lamb's Book of Life, well, that means that you're not always saved. You were once saved, and you were once in the Book of Life. Otherwise, he wouldn't be able to blot you out of the Book of Life. Amen? Amen. Okay, so use your head. These people that say that no one can be perfect, and once saved, always saved, doesn't say that here. Jesus says, I will not blot out his name out of the book of life. But there's scriptures that say, I will blot your name out of the Lamb's book of life. You were in there, you were alive, but I'm going to blot you out because you're not worthy. You didn't walk according to the things that I command you to do. But I will confess his name before my Father and before his angels. Now, do you believe that God is going to take a homosexual and confess his name before the holy angels and his father? No. Or a fornicator? No. Or an adulterer? No. Or those people that are murdering babies? No. Or do you think that the Lord is going to take the popes and the cardinals and all these phony priests that are Catholic and that he's going to confess those people before his father and before his angels? Do you think he will? No. no, because he said that these are those that keep his commandments. And the Lord says that you're not supposed to worship idols. You're not supposed to pray to Mary. You're not supposed to pray to any saint. You're not supposed to pray to anybody but God through Christ. And if you do, every time you do, there's a big blotch, like an ink spot going on your garments to the point that your garments are filthy, dirty, black, as midnight when the moon goes behind the clouds. So I'm saying these things. Look, I'm confessing his names, these people that are in white, before my father. What about lesbians? No. Oh, father, this lesbian, she's a pervert. She's sick in her brain, and she's sick in her spirit, in her soul. She's never repented. She's never wanted the power of God. She says, I was born a lesbian. I'm always going to be a lesbian. Now, the Lord loves the actual person, but he doesn't love that sin. Well, I think I'll try lesbianism. I see so much of it on TV and in the papers. Everybody seems to be going for it, so I'll try it out. And so everybody's trying it out. All the females, all the females, the mayors and the females. Well, no, the Lord's not going to take you before his Father and before his angels. Verse 6, he that hath an ear, now you people that can understand the word of God, he's not leaving you without power. He says, do what I tell you and you have all the power that you possibly need to get into the kingdom of heaven. But you yourself have become lazy, lethargic, and you just love the world. You're unthankful for the word of God. You're unthankful for the things that God has given you. You're unthankful for everything. And as a matter of fact, you're so unthankful that a root of bitterness has grown up in you. And you actually hate the brothers and sisters. Every time you disobey God's word, there's a big blotch. Like one of these paint balls that hits you and splatter your garments to where you are filthy. He that has an ear to hear these things, let him hear what the Holy Spirit saith unto the churches and the people in the churches. Verse 7. And to the angel of the church of Philadelphia, write these things, saith he, Christ, that is holy, and he, Christ, that is true, and he, Christ, that hath the key of David, and he, the Lord Jesus Christ, that opens doors for people, and no man can shut them. He can open all kinds of doors for you if you're just willing to obey him. So he can open doors for you, and no man can shut them. And he can shut doors for you, and no man, no man can open them. You will not be able to open a door for yourself. And you do it to yourself. That's who you're doing it to. Verse 8. I know thy works. Yeah, I know what's up your rotten, filthy sleeve. Some of you people. And he's saying to these people, I know your works. Are you doing some good works? I know you're doing good, and I know the things that you're doing that's bad. Behold, I have set before you an open door, and no man can shut it. For thou hast a little strength. 
Oh, why don't you have all the strength of the Lord? Because the Lord says it's available. It's available. Why do you just have a little strength? For thou hast a little strength and has kept my word and has not denied my name. Hmm. Verse 9, Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan. There's so many people that call themselves Christians, and they're not. They're the synagogue of Satan. Verse 9, Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, the church of Satan, which say they are Jews, which means believers in God, which means Christians, and are not, but do lie. They say they're Christians, but they hate the brothers and sisters. They hate doing the work of God. They hate fellowship. They love to hole up by themselves like an old witch. They say they're Christians. They say they're Jews. To be a Christian, you have to become a Jew. And are not Christians or Jews, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet. And to know, I'll make them to know that I have loved you, thee. Because you don't let people get to you. You let me get to you. You, I tell you something and it gets to you. You do it. Verse 10, because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. Well, we're living in that day right now. But the Lord says he'll keep you from the hour of temptation because thou hast kept the word. In other words, you kept doing what I said, not just because you kept reading, but you were doing my word of my patience. You've patiently done the work. On a daily basis, the first thing you thought of is, should I do a message? And Lord, should I go out and do something? Should I go up to the church? Shall I go to Arkansas? Shall I go to New York? Shall I go to L.A.? Shall I go to Israel? Shall I go to Africa? Shall I go to India? What do you want me to do? And he says to do it. And then, you know, something fantastic is going to happen if the Lord tells you to do something and you do it. There's something, a big something that's going to happen because of it. A lot of people don't want to hear this kind of talk. They want to do what they want to do, even though it's not exciting. Nothing unusual ever happens. And whatever does happen, you know, they like to go to bed with men or women. And pretty soon that gets boring. And then all of a sudden they catch some kind of dreaded disease or something. And then they figure it's too late for anything to happen for them. And therefore, they're just living in a wretched world. But these people, because thou hast kept the word of my patience, you patiently did what I said day after day, and different things happen. I make events happen where it's interesting. I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation. Well, we have television today. Now, the Lord knew that back then. He knew of TV and pornography, and he knew about lesbianism and homosexuality and how decrepit women having uh, sex and men with animals and with babies. He knew all these things. But the devil has such a hold on people, and they seemingly don't know how to break that hold. All it is simply is to come to the Lord Jesus Christ and humble yourself before him, you rotten, filthy human, you unthankful swine, and accept the Holy Spirit into your body, into your heart, your soul, your mind. So that the Lord can say of you, because you have kept the word. You have kept the word. You've kept Jesus. The word of God is Jesus. That's why when you accept Jesus, the Bible says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. That means the entire word of God, and thou shalt be saved. And because thou hast kept the word, Jesus, the word of my patience, the Lord was very patient. He endured hardship. He endured all the things. He kept all the word of God, and he patiently went to the cross so that he could shed his blood so we could have a detergent strong enough to take away our sins, which is his blood. And the Lord says, because you've done this, I also will keep you from the hour of temptation. And that's where we're going to stop right now. Praise the Lord. We are about ready to pray people to the Lord. 
The Lord said that if you do what he says, and that means get saved, and begin doing the work of the Lord, and you say, well, what's the work of the Lord? You need to read the Bible, or you need to listen to this program all the time, because I'll tell you what the work of the Lord is. He saved us to do his work in us and through us. You'll find that out soon enough. If you just say the prayer unto him, he will not turn you away. God will use you in such a powerful way if you'll just trust him and let him use you so that you can walk in white raiment and be in the kingdom of heaven with him. And if some of your loved ones have gone on before you, that you can be with them. Accept him now by saying this prayer. Say this to him. My Lord and my God, have mercy upon my soul, sinner. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God, and I believe that he died on the cross and shed his precious blood for the forgiveness of all my former filthy sins. And I believe that you, Father God, raised Jesus from the dead by the power of the Holy Spirit. I open the door of my heart, and I invite you into my heart, Lord Jesus, Holy Father, Holy Spirit. Wash all my former filthy sins away in the precious blood that you shed for me, Jesus, on the cross at Calvary. You will not turn me away, Lord Jesus. You will save my soul. I know because your word says so. Your word says that you'll turn no one away, and that includes me. Therefore, I know that you have heard me, and I know that you have answered me, and I know that I'm saved. And I thank you, Lord Jesus, for saving my eternal soul. Now just raise your hands up in praise and thank the Lord for allowing you to attach your spirit to his eternal spirit. Now Sharon, tell our listening audience how they can receive a copy of this program number 759. Go to alamuministries.com, email us at taoffice at alamuministries.com, or write to Tony Alamo Christian Ministries, P.O. Box 2948, Hollywood, California, 90078 or call area code 661-252-5686 that's 661-252-5686 praise the lord this is world pastor tony alamo saying tune in tomorrow for a continuation of the book of revelation